Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to the Reselling Rebels podcast, episode number 10. I should do that little uh, intro every time actually. Um, So today is going to be mistakes, poor practices and taking pride in the job. We are going to be discussing a few little bits from last week and then we are going to be getting on to some new stuff. Um, Essentially, as I mentioned last week, these two podcasts, the previous one, the reality of reselling, and then this one here are basically sister shows, so uh, we're going to be kind of elaborating a little bit on last week, we're going to be adding a bit of new stuff as well, Um, and essentially that's what it's going to be. So first off, I wanted to discuss very, very briefly about some of the daily activities touched on last time. So as you may be aware, last time I touched on the reality of of reselling and a few of the different things that resellers have to do during the everyday. So I mentioned things like packaging, sourcing, listing, photography, accounting, buying equipment, tidying the workspace, putting stock away, answering messages and offers, doing promoted listings. I could keep these going. I could reel them off for a while. Um, But basically, I wanted to relate them to poor practices today and I wanted to just slightly touch upon that touch upon that a little bit more and then obviously go into mistakes a little bit more as well. So, you know, when we've got things like photography, we want to make sure that we've got a good backdrop. We want to make sure that uh, our lighting is functioning well. We want to make sure that the item is uh, being uh, photoed with you know, at least a, a good camera phone, or if you want to use a camera, you can, but, you know, if you want to use a, a decent quality camera phone, smartphone, or whatever, do we still call them camera phones? I don't know why I'm saying camera phone, smartphone, or just a decent quality phone, uh, camera, then, um, yeah, you, you want to make good photos, you want to do good photos, so make sure that that setup's good. If it isn't good, you know, if you're, if you've not got good lighting, If you've not got a good backdrop, I mean, you don't need to have a white backdrop. There's many people out there who do it on laminate flooring, who do it on, um, uh, George does it on, what does he do it on? Um, Oh, he does it on that green AstroTurf thing. That actually looks pretty good. And then he has like a, a, a wooden backdrop. Now, I do know that on eBay, uh, certain backdrops basically will get ranked in the search better or something like that or they get ranked on google and also not only that they're just generally more psychologically appealing to buyers so you've always got that in there but you know just make sure you've got a decent backdrop uh make sure that the item is being seen in all of its glory and is not just whacked on a table somewhere where you've got coffee mug stains all on the table and the lighting's terrible and you can hardly see the item if there's exposure everywhere on the photos nothing like that make sure you're doing the photos well same with your keywords and your title really pack out that title with keywords do put as many keywords in there as you can and avoid these poor practices that will ultimately result in bad business for you which will ultimately result in problems for you so i just wanted to kind of touch upon that very briefly just taking a few of the things from last week and and touching upon the poor practice practices there obviously i mentioned last week about a few of the others so i mentioned about tidying the workspace and if you don't tidy it you're going to run into trouble and stuff like that so i don't want to touch on that too much um so first off um moving on from that I wanted to outline mistakes and I wanted to say something I didn't say last week in the fact that mistakes are okay and I've made absolutely tons of mistakes in resign and in my life, in my life more so than resign Um, and it's made me less fearful of mistakes. Obviously now understanding philosophy a little bit better, understanding the world around me a little bit better, I understand now that really mistakes are just a conception of society and that ultimately in uh, the ground of being, the, the reality of the situation, mistakes don't actually exist. They're simply society giving us a set of rules to live by um, that are potentially um, meant to be good rules to live by but obviously we don't know whether the people who drew up them rules are really any good you know I mean those people who drew up them them rules might be totally off it you never know do you and how could I um 
accept that their word when uh, my word is just as good and all the rest of it. So really, you know, when you look at it from a philosophical angle and when you really have made a lot of mistakes in your life, you start to understand that they don't actually matter. Just do what you're going to do and uh, and enjoy what you're doing and try and live the best uh, life that you can live and the best uh, reselling that you can live. So what I mean by that is, yes, there's clearly definable mistakes within the realm of reselling. So it would be a mistake to uh, send a message to your buyer effing and jeffing about something that they've said prior. That would be a mistake in the context of reselling. So make sure that you are aware of the mistakes that are mistakes in the context of resign and potentially avoid them um, and obviously make sure that you're living up to the standard that you want to live up to within your business and, and making the um, and, and formulating the ideals that you want to set as well. So, you know, when you've made a lot of mistakes, they start to become a tool for progression. They start to become a tool for understanding um, of your own ability, of your own uh, philosophy, of your own um, ideas with life, really, and what you what you want to bring to the table, what you believe is correct, what you um, what experience you would like to have and therefore you're going to provide that experience to others because it's an experience that you would like to have uh, and therefore you want to be giving that to others you want to be giving others the opportunity of that pleasant experience that you may have experienced in the past so mistakes are perfectly fine they are a useful part of the learning process in reselling and you don't need to worry about them. You just make your mistakes, you understand them for what they are, and you move on. And if you were really annoyed about making that mistake because it was a moral mistake that you made, let's say, an, uh, a moral mistake in the ideal, uh, or the idea, sorry, of what you deem morals, because again, morals are different for everyone, but what you deem a moral mistake, for example, you sent something out and it was the wrong item or something, uh, maybe for whatever reason, I don't know, maybe you sent out the wrong item and you knew it was the wrong item. For God, I don't know why anyone would do that, but you know, maybe that was the case or something, um, and you thought you could get away with something, I don't know, you didn't have the other item to hand, and you've posted that one out, and it's a very, very similar item, and you think you can get away with something, let's say, and it's in your eyes, and in my eyes, actually, that would be a kind of moral thing, really, a moral, let's say, a moral mistake, um, so then you think to yourself, well, I didn't like that, I didn't like how I handled that, so that's good, because it's given me the idea in myself that I don't like that. That's something that I don't want to do again. So what I will do is not do it next time. I'll try and find a better, more suitable moral route to go down than doing something like that. And so it gives you uh, the ability to understand yourself, understand your moral compass, understand where you want to be and, and how far you want to not be immoral, but what level of morals you want to have, essentially, and and where you're going to draw the line, essentially. So, for example, we can look at this very clearly in Recycling. So, some people, if they uh, don't have an item in stock, they will be more than happy to drop ship the item out, right? And they'll buy it off another site or they'll buy it off eBay, uh, another seller on eBay, and they'll put this, the buyer, your buyer's address in, and then they will drop. They will have that person basically send it to your buyer. Now, to some people, that would be totally unacceptable. They don't, they don't like that. We think that's uh, dishonest. All the rest of it. All the rest of it. You know. To other people, that's completely acceptable. Now, there's one up from that as well. There's another thing that you can do as well with this. It's maybe slightly more immoral. Let's say it's it's maybe slightly, uh, just slightly one up. There's another way you can do it. And let's say you don't drop ship the item, but you simply mark it as posted. You mark the po item as posted, even though you've not got it in store. I've got an eBay, something on eBay then. You've not got it on stock, in stock. 
you mark it as postage. You don't bother drop shipping it, but you mark it as postage. And then they come back to you a few weeks later or a week later or whatever and say, I've not received my item. Um, and then you refund them. Now, of course, you have refunded them the money, but that's taking it a step up with kind of slightly being immoral because you've not even bothered sending out the item or drop shipping it. So there's these different levels and it's where you draw the line. It's where you say, no, nope, I'm not having that for my own moral. I, I wouldn't want to be I say tricked, it's not really tricked, but I wouldn't, let's say, want to be tricked in such a way uh, like that. Um, and therefore, I I will d put my best foot forward and try and resolve things honestly and very be very communicate uh, uh, communicate very well with my customers, all the rest of it. And I wouldn't even do any of those things or, or whatever. And I know there's there's people I know that who would never do any of those things. And then there's others who have no problem with doing those things. I sit somewhere in the middle, really. I've always been kind of you know, I'm a bit in the middle. I draw the line somewhere, around, I don't know, just somewhere in the middle, really. I wouldn't say I'm incredibly um, immoral or anything like that, but I wouldn't say I've got... I'm not the type of businessman, let's say, to be really, really concerned with everything on the planet. You know, there's a lot of people out there who are like really really eco-friendly and all power to them that's brilliant that's very very moral on their part and i would never try to stop them doing that whatsoever if that's what you want to do brilliant but i've never been the type of businessman to be really 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 eco-friendly i'll do it i'll partake in it to the extent that i want to partake in it to uh you know maybe getting certain items of packaging from an eco-friendly source i'm happy to do that but I've never been the businessman to really go all out and get everything eco-friendly, get everything really, uh, really squared in such a way. And uh, therefore, you know, I, I sit on the fence. I wouldn't say I'm immo immoral in such a way. I wouldn't say I'm incredibly moral in such a way. I'm just, I'm on the fence a little bit, you know. So, um, and, and it just depends where you sit. If you want to be a completely immoral businessman, then you do so, but it's probably going to bite you <laughs> bite you in the bum at some point. Uh, if you want to be an incredibly moral person in business, then do so. But you might want to kind of be a little bit hard as well, because if you're really, really moral um, and you're really, really nice about it and all brilliant and everything, then you're going to come across the same problems and stuff anyway. So you've got to have a bit of hardness in there as well. And a bit of um, like kind of looking out for yourself. And, and I touched upon this in a podcast a while ago, actually, and looking out for yourself and a bit of selfishness in there as well, not just like a complete goody goody. Um, and that's why I sit on the fence because it's the best for me. And I say, in my opinion, for me, it's the best place to be. I'm not immoral, I'm not moral, I'm just sitting on the fence, you know, I, I have the ability to discern, to engage with, to understand both sides, and, uh, and you know, I'm going to look out for myself at certain times, and you better know I'm going to look out for myself at certain times, but at other times I'm going to be quite moral, I'm going to be quite just, I'm going to be very fair, I'm very much like that with a lot of my customers when they have a problem, well, I say a lot, I mean all of my customers to be honest, but uh, you know, I'm very much like that. I'm very attentive, very moral in that regard. But then there's other things, maybe such with the packaging, as I mentioned. I'm not particularly incredibly moral. I'm just like, well, I'll get a few of these eco stuff, but I'm not gonna, I'm not bothered about getting loads of it and stuff. So you could say that's a little bit less green or a little bit less moral in that regard. So yeah, again, anyway, that's that. So don't worry about too much about mistakes. Just do what you can. Uh, set your kind of moral lines or moral standpoint or moral viewpoint and then go with it and uh, you know if you're being quite if you've set your standpoint as being quite an immoral person just make sure that that's pro uh, make sure you're aware that that's probably not the best standpoint to go for um, and, and maybe readjust that a little bit and and be sl slightly more towards the moral side um, but People are going to do what they do. There's going to be a moral businessman out there. There's going to be moral businessmen out there. And there's going to be people in the middle. And that's how it is. So, um, yeah, do what you're going to do. But, you know, do it in accordance with what you feel is right. You know, do it in accordance with what you feel is right. And what you feel 
would you would like to happen to yourself as well. That's always a good thing to go by. What would you like to happen to yourself if you were in that situation? I know if I bought an item and I wanted to return it. In fact, I did this the other week. I returned an item. I very rarely return items, but I returned an item and uh, the people were really, really lo lovely with me. Now, if anyone wants to return an item of mine, I'm very, very lovely. I don't say anything. I don't ask questions. I don't do anything like that. I just say, yeah, send it back. No trouble. Um, you know, we'll get you sorted. We'll get a refund f sorted for you as soon as I get it back, etc. All that sort of stuff. Very nice of it. And that's how I treat people because that's how I would like to be treated. Um, you know, on the kind of customer service side of it. So as I say, on one side of it, I'm very moral, the customer service side. On another side, there's maybe a slight little bit of a twinkle of, not necessarily evil, but of naughtiness in my eye, let's say, and where I, uh, I get away with being a little, little less moral or just standing on the fence. Um, so, what else have we got here? Uh, did you do, I'll just have a quick read of this. Um... Touch upon last week. Wow, what happened last week? I've put, I put, I wrote down here, go into a little detail on a few of the mistakes. Touch upon last week. I don't, I don't know what, I don't know what happened last week. I can't remember what, what mistake I made last week. I don't know. I don't know what that is. Maybe it was the re uh, reter return thing. I was, I don't know. But basically that return I did, I ordered the wrong items by mistake. So it was my fault and I sent them back and we were very good with it and everything. Um, so yeah, uh, maybe that was the mistake I was meant to touch on. I can't remember, but I've wrote down that anyway. Um, yeah, and I wanted to also discuss, I've just touched upon this really as well actually, but uh, discuss the long-term mistakes that may cost you your business. So if you've got things like wrong margins, if you're not, if you've not got a good enough margin on your products, if you're, you've got incredibly poor listings, if you've got bad photography, if you have got terrible customer service, and this comes back to the moral immoral debate again, so I will touch on that very very slightly in a minute. Um, but if you've got those things, then that may cost you your business. If you are being immoral in the sense of having terrible customer service, if you are being immoral in, maybe not the fact of bad listings or um, photography, but not necessarily immoral, but if you're not um, taking pride in your work with your listings and your photography, and then you're being immoral on top of that with terrible customer service, all these things will go together to causing your business to maybe go down the drain or certainly be severely impacted in a negative way and especially if you are maybe ignorant not necessarily moral or immoral at this point but ignorant to your margins in your business that's going to cost you your business because if you're making a pound profit on each item and you know you're selling them for 10 quid or whatever and for some reason you're only making a quid profit and you sell 10 a day that's only going to be getting your 10 quid net profit a day so really you know if you've got wrong margins you're not gonna not gonna last long because you won't be able to do anything with the money even you won't be able to earn enough for you so you know make sure that you are obviously um taking pride in the job and rectifying a few of these mistakes if you think that you're, you're not earning enough if you think you're not charging enough for items or if you're not got enough of a margin then find out how you can improve that go to a different auction house a different car boot a different charity shop to get things for cheaper go um you know charge a little bit more if you can maybe improve the quality of your photos and keywords so that then maybe you can get a few more searches uh, you know a few more people looking at your items on searches and um, maybe you know that might be able to you might be able to increase your price over time because you're getting a few more views and searches and um, and therefore you've got the ability to charge a little bit more because uh, you're able to generate a little bit more custom from those new searches and the, the, those new those new views and stuff so yeah just make sure that you are keeping long-term mistakes at a minimum you're all these mistakes that you're making that could turn into severe long-term mistakes, get them rectified immediately. Do not sit around, do not stand around waiting for something to happen because if you do that, something bad will happen. You've got to get on it straight away, keep things changing, keep things moving and uh, rectify those mistakes so that then you don't get in a position of 
getting loads of negative feedback because of your terrible customer service, uh, you know, not being able to pay some, some of your bills because you've got terrible margins, um, getting messages moaning at you for saying, oh, well, these photos aren't very good. Can you improve your photos or whatever? Because loads of customers are going to moan about that if your photos aren't going to go. Well, not loads, but a few customers might moan about that. So then again, it's just all more stuff for you to do, more work for you to do. So just take pride in your job and then uh, that will all work out for you anyway because you're doing the things right in the first place. You're not you're not doing bad photos, you're not doing terrible customer service, you're not doing all these things, and therefore it will just naturally uh, flow more positively for you uh, with regards to in your job. So yeah, that's something I wanted to touch on as well. Um, next, we've got doing the job because you want to do it, not because it's a chore. If you've been doing resign for a while and it's always been a chore, you may need to quit and do something new. Now, I'm not gonna beat around the bush here, if, it, if you have been doing retailing for a long time and it's always been a chore from day one, as I just mentioned, if it's always been something you've not really grasped, if you've not really got in there massively and you're not really that enthusiastic about it, it may be time to quit. It may be time just to say, look, I've given this a good go for six months. I've given this a good go for a year, whatever it may be, whatever time scale it is. But you know what? It's always been a chore for me. I've hated answering my messages. I've hated doing packing. I've hated doing listing. It is perfectly natural and normal in any job, for even a job that you really, really love, for there to be one aspect of a job or two aspects of a job that you, you're a bit, you know, I can take it or leave it kind of thing. But if you're from day one thinking everything in reselling is a chore, then you're probably going to just want to quit and just try something new. I'm not going to beat around the bush. We all, as resellers, um, you know, have, you know, resellers who've been doing this for a while and who genuinely love the job. We all have things. We all have days where it's like, mm, I just, I can't be bothered with packaging today or, oh, you know, I'm not, you know, I, personally for me, the messages maybe, you know, I'm not too bothered about the messaging and stuff. So p different people have different things. As I say, for me, uh, it would probably be, if it, I'm, I'm not too bad with packaging, I have ups and downs with packaging, sometimes I go through periods of not liking it, but to be honest, if I get into a routine with it, then most days I'm quite happy to package, but the messages can sometimes get me a little bit, especially if I've got quite a lot of messages to answer, so you know, in certain times and with, with certain aspects of the job, there will be little things that niggle people, even if you enjoy resign, but if, you, if everything is being a chore for you, then it's just probably not for you. So I did just want to mention that. I did just want to not beat around the bush with that. Because if somebody, someone's watching this who it really has been a chore for for the last three months or six months or whatever, then it may be the fact that you just need to hear that. And I'm not saying to you, quit today. But I'm saying if that's happening for you, one, you need to seriously look at your business and what you're doing and maybe work something out, or you just need to quit. So I just wanted to say that just to to get it out there, really. I'm not trying to say that to be incredibly depressive. I'm just saying it to live in a little bit of, of you know realistic mentality there. So that's that one there anyway. So just do the job because you enjoy it. And if you're not enjoying it, don't do it. Why would you do something that you don't enjoy? Yes, okay, I know that there's people going to come back at me and say, well, you know, some of us have circumstances where we have to do things we don't enjoy. And I get that. But if you're not in those circumstances of not having to do something, and really, we're not, we don't all have to do something. There are ways around, even in the toughest of circumstances, there are ways around limiting doing the things that you don't want to do. Maybe you'll still have to do them to some extent, but there's ways of limiting the amount of time you have to do things that you don't want to do. But yeah, you know, if you are, if you can change, if you have that ability to be able to flip straight away now into doing something you don't want to do and doing something you, you do want to do, then just do that. Don't hang around with reselling. Don't think, oh, well, this is a bit of a chore, I don't like this, but I'm going to continue. Why continue? Why? You know, why not try something new? So do it because you want to do it. And if you do it because you want to do it, things will happen positively for you. If you do it 
and it's a chore and it's a drag and it's something, oh, I can't be bothered with this, then things are going to happen that are negative for you or it's going to feel more negative anyway, just generally. So that's that one. Discuss a few good practices and things that relate to taking pride in the job, such as a desire to keep learning and upgrading equipment, processes, etc. Taking taking time when doing individual jobs, enjoying the work rather than just getting it done. So again, that last bit kind of ties in a little bit with the uh, talk with what I was talking about a minute ago. But yeah, so a few good practices. You know, as I've touched upon, I think I touched upon earlier on about just doing your photos good, doing these listings really, really well, getting high quality listings out there, keeping everything within your business in order. Do your accounting, make sure that you're doing it well. Make sure that, you know, um, you've got your accounting uh, set up perfectly the way you want it. Not the way I want it, not the way Harry down the street wants it, but the way you want it. I'm not here preaching to you saying you should do it in a certain way. I'm saying that you should do it in your way. That's what I'm preaching. I'm saying you go ahead and do it in your way. Um, And the only reason I'm preaching is because I'm young, I'm arrogant, and uh, I'm a cocky little git, really. But that's who I am at the moment. Maybe when I'm 50, as I've said for many, many years on this channel, I will mellow a little bit and it might be quite a nice experience because I'll be a bit more toned down. But essentially, you know, do what you want to do. You know, make sure your accounting is how you want it and is effective for you and, and you're doing it well and you're doing it right. As long as the accounting's getting done right, and it's uh, done in a way that you like, then perfect. That's all that needs to happen. You know, when we are upgrading equipment, what we're doing when we upgrade equipment is we are directly taking pride in our job because we've chosen, instead of to take that money out for ourselves, we've chosen to reinvest that money into a more productive and a more blossoming business and a more um, blossoming style of photography or style of listings or whatever it may be. You know, if you let's say your your business is, is also tied in with YouTube, so maybe you buy a new camera or something, you're investing back into that business. So just being able to take pride in the job, doing things to do them upgrading, learning constantly, going out there, watching these videos on other resellers, not taking them word for word, not saying, oh, well, Adam does this, so I'm going to do this, or Nick does this, so I'm going to do this, or Ben does this, or or George, or whoever, you know, or, or Mel, or Mrs. M, or whoever it is, it doesn't really matter. Oh, they do this, so I'm going to do this. But say, you know, looking at the videos and thinking, right, that's what they've done, So in my situation, how can I apply this to my business? What fits in here? Because, you know, that doesn't really quite fit in with my business. Or or to be honest, I'm not too happy or comfortable doing what they do. So I'm going to do it this way because that fits in with my personality, fits in with my brand, my business, with what I want to produce, with the creative element to myself. Maybe someone else is a little bit less creative. So their, their way of doing things is a little bit more, I wouldn't say mundane because that's actually unfair, but I would certainly say maybe... Um, um, maybe mechanical, but again, it, it has that depressive element to it, these words, don't we? But just maybe it's slightly less colourful than your way of doing it, essentially. You would do it in a more colourful or creative way opposed to that person who's done it in a more orderly way. That's a better word, isn't it? Orderly. It doesn't sound as uh, harsh or depressive uh, in its nature. So, you know, they're not, uh, you know, you maybe want to do it in slightly more creative and vibrant and fun way, they do it in more of a uh, orderly way. Now you appreciate and you watch those video, their videos and you enjoy what you're watching and they're doing it re- really well and they're doing well for themselves, but you, you can discern from their videos and from your own personality that that's not the way you want to do it. So then you do it in the way that you want to do it. And you take the good practices Uh, into your business that you feel you need to take because the good practices yes okay a lot of them may be similar for for most people you know if we speak generally about good photos or you know long titles and stuff like that but there's also got to be an element of creativity into it now there's a distinction between amazon and ebay and the distinction is creativity 
with eBay, you have a, um, a larger ability to be more creative on your listings. The same is true with Etsy as well. Um, and you have a larger ability to be this creative individual who can add a little bit to their listings, who can, you know, they can be creative in the description with what they're ty uh, uh, typing out, with the words they're using, with how descriptive they're being. They can be creative in their photos. Maybe they can add some props or something into the photo. eBay doesn't recommend adding props into the photo because they say that obviously uh, it may lead buyers astray. They may think they're getting something else when they're actually getting one of the other items in the photo. But the option is there to be more creative on eBay, to, to allow a little bit more of your creative flair to come out. So then that gets into the idea of, are you an orderly and mechanical individual um, or are you a creative and uh, more liberal individual, let's say? If you're a more creative and liberal individual, you may want to go for eBay or Etsy. If you're a me mechanical more orderly person, let's say, you may want to go with Amazon. That might fit you better. And it's again, it comes down to personality, which sales platform you want to go to as well. That's all, all included in it. So we've got these different good practices for different people. The creative person might, the, a good practice for them might be making the items themselves and then putting them on and doing uh, f photography that's maybe a little bit different, a little bit quirky, a little bit out there. For someone else, a good practice might be taking very standard, orderly photographs that are still very, very well done, but are still obviously utilizing good lighting and all the rest of it, but they're just a little bit more kind of uh, orderly and standard and kind of one size fits all kind of thing, which is nothing wrong with that. But uh, there's just two different ways and therefore there's two different methods of good practices. So these kind of good practices can be su subjective as well. On an overall scale, the good practices um, are more objective. But then when we break them down, we can see that they're also more subjective. So it's it's interesting that we've got that distinction there as well and that the distinction can be made between both the sign platforms of uh, what the good practices are and obviously uh, where you fit within those good practices and where you fit as a seller um, and, and, and what you want to do essentially and where you want to take your brand. So it's very, very interesting that one. Um, and then what have we got here? I think this might be the... Oh, actually, I've not just touched on it. Well, I did touch on it briefly, but I'll touch upon it again. Enjoying the work rather than just getting it done. So again, just mention briefly, you know, if we enjoy the work, if we put an element of ourselves into the work, if we really start to hone in on what we want uh, with our resign and really focus on that, keep going for what we want, what we... Uh, what we would like for our business, uh, how we would like to present ourselves to our customers, all that sort of stuff, then we are going to enjoy ourselves a lot more than if we're just doing this because we feel like we need to do it. Maybe we, we want some money. Oh, you want some money, right? Okay, well, well, get on and do this. Now, I've always found the money thing to be a nine to five thing, right? And uh, entrepreneurship or self-employment or whatever is a creative, more creative thing. Now, there are there is a very big element of mechanical and orderly to self-employment as well. And there is a big element, if maybe even if not more so than the nine to five job, there is a big element of money. But the just getting the money thing. I feel is more of a nine to five thing, right? If you want to just get the money and, you know, you don't mind doing a nine to five job and, you know, as long as it's a fairly easy job, you're right. Just do that. Get your money that way, you know? But if you're thinking in that, if you're still in that line of conscious thinking, when you come to a business that you can bring an element of creativity to, or an element of yourself to. Even if you're not um, bringing creativity to it, you're still bringing an element of yourself to it. Because even if we don't, we may not think about this consciously all the time, but there is an element of all of us within our stores. We can look at, so many people have um, elements of themselves to their stores. Their branding speaks of it massively. There is an element of their own personality in their stores. For example, with myself, I sell a, mix ma a mishmash of everything. Now, if you were to describe me in 
a few words, probably eccentric, eclectic, different, unique, those would probably come up for my own personality, those would also come up for my store, maybe not eccentric, but certainly eclectic and unique and different and all the rest of it, because there's loads of different things in there. We look at, let's say, uh, uh, Lexi's store, now I've not gone over and looked at her store, but I know that she sells vintage dresses, vintage clothing. She's, you know, she's got a little bit of that quirkiness. I'm sure she won't mind me saying. And I'm sure you can see within her branding, within her store, that little bit of kind of uh, quirkiness, differentness with these wild dresses she's buying and stuff, especially some of the more flamboyant ones she's buying. So you've got that in there as well. And you've got all these, you know, these different people aligned with their stores. And this is why eBay is a little bit more creative because we put a bit of ourselves into our stores. Even if our self is one of more of an orderly person, we can then see that in our, uh, in our, in our stores as well. Because we as individuals bring what we have in personality traits, in, in, in who we are, to our job, into our store as well. So it's about that. And if you are just doing it for the money, you won't care about that side of it. And if you don't care about that side of it, then you've lost a little bit of heart from your business. You've lost a bit of the heart from what being an entrepreneur or being a small business owner is. Because there's a lot of heart in being a small business owner. It's not just, um, you know, it's not just, oh, well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get a load of money. And those people end up obviously quitting after a while or some of them do not not all of them but some of them so when you think of it like that and you just think of it enjoying the work doing it doing you doing everything you can bring to it and doing it with all the good practices that you believe in with all the morals that you believe in with what your goal with what you're focused on um then then things start to align then things start to happen, as I mentioned, and there will mainly be positive things. And when negative things do come along, because you've kind of built something that is sort of tied to you in one regard, you will always be happy and willing to kind of, I, I want to say fight for it, but I don't like using the word fight, but kind of uh, you always be willing to overcome the challenges. Let's say that word, you know, let's say overcome the challenges. You always be willing to overcome those things, those barriers that, that, that come up. So, yeah, I wanted to touch upon that as well. And then finally, I've got, a, obviously, I've got a question as well after this, but this is my final point of the day. Be kind to yourself. If you aren't where you want to be or feel like you aren't living up to a good standard of quality, don't worry, just slowly move closer to a better quality of work. So, of course, you know, you may at the moment be suffering from doing a few poor practices. You may not be taking pride in the job as much as you would like to. But don't worry about it. Because if you've set your sights and if you're somewhat comfortable with where you are now, even though I know that you might not feel 100% happy with your business, but if you feel comfortable in yourself, if you feel happy with where you're going, if you feel that um, you know uh, somewhat of how to get there, if you feel that, uh, you know, you have that motivation, that drive inside of you that, that just gives you that confidence that things will work out if you keep holding on to that and you be kind to yourself you are understanding and accepting of um you know the issues within your business and the things that you need to correct then you will just slowly move uh, slowly move closer to that better standard of quality and then ultimately you will get to be taking pride in your work more and don't worry if the first time or the first few times you're not reaching that standard of quality or you're not taking pride in your job or taking pride with your job in uh, the, the best way or the, the way that you would really want to. Because you don't need to worry, and I'll tell you for why, and I'll, I'll completely get rid of any doubt from you right now. If you are worried about gaining a standard of quality in your business, the fact that you are worried is validation that you don't need to worry. 
Because if you're worried, then that means you're going to put in the hard work to get there because you're worried about it. So it's going to be something that you're going to want to straighten out. If you weren't worried, I would be worried for you because if you weren't worried, then you wouldn't ever strive for anything and your business would fail. So it's the very fact that you are worried that gives me a validation that you will go and you will get what you want and uh, you will you will advance in your business, you know, and you will get to that place where you want. But always never lose sight of the fact that you are quite happy as a human, as a person on this planet now, more of a, a human look at this. But as a human on this planet, you are perfectly fine right now with where you are, even if you haven't got to the goals or wherever you need to be within your business. But as a human, you're perfectly fine. So I just wanted to mention that and obviously hopefully give you a little bit of comfort in the fact that if you are um, attached to your business, if you do feel like you want to make things work, then then they're just end, ending up going to work anyway. Of course, it's going to take a little bit of hard work. But if you worry about it, then you're going to get there anyway because you're, you're obviously, that's validation that you're, you you do want to get there, that you are, that you, that you do take it seriously in one regard and that you're going to get somewhere in your career. Now, you know, you don't need to worry about it because of the fact that because you're worrying about it, you know you'll get there. So if you know that now, if you really do know that because you're worrying that is going to be validation that you are going to take the actions and take the steps necessary to get there, then you can get rid of the worry because you know that, oh, well, I'm worried about it, but I I know it's going to come off anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my worry to the side. I'm going to get my head down. I'm going to get this work done, but I don't need to worry about it because I know that I've got that drive in the back of my mind anyway, and I'm going to do these things. So that's how I look at it from uh, these days. I, uh, you know, put my worry to the side and I think to myself, well, I've got that as a validation, as a positive validation of the the fact that I'm committed to this. But I'm not going to let that impede me or anything like that. I'm just going to get on, do the work, and what comes out will come out. And I know that if I believe in myself, if I trust in myself in such a way, um, that it will come out and it will be fairly decent. And yeah, okay, maybe sometimes it won't be very decent, but then what I'll do is I'll rectify it, work on it for the next time around, and then if it comes out better, then it comes out better. And the the likelihood is it is going to come out better. It's not going to come out worse for you, so it's all right. So just, yeah, be kind to yourself. Keep going. Just enjoy it, you know, enjoy your business and enjoy every sale that you're getting, all the experiences that you're having and uh, things all things will slowly work out a little bit. So anyway, I'm just going to go. I'm just going to get up my phone. I'm a little bit lazy because I've not got up my uh, phone. I did have a question on or might have just been a comment on my... Um, nope, one sec, not that. Yeah, it's on this one here. So this is on the YouTube community tab post. So someone says, not charging enough for the item and or for the postage. Also, not being able to find the item item once you've sold it. I waste hours with this one. Yeah, so, of course, a mistake is, uh, very correctly here, the the Gurch, I think he's called, um, not charging enough for the item. So as I say, I touched on this a little bit. Obviously, your margins, if you are... um, you know, you're not charging enough or you're not making a good enough net profit margin, then that is going to be a mistake that may seriously impede your business and, uh, you know, negatively impede your business at a later date. And also, I think I did mention this slightly as well. So it's funny how I mentioned these. It must have been, I, I must have kind of somewhat was aware of the, the comment because I did already read it yesterday. And therefore, I've just kind of naturally put it into the podcast. I don't even know how that worked, but yeah. Um, so yeah, finding the item as I touched upon uh, earlier on, you know that can be uh, a problem as well, where you can't find an item and and things go awry. But to be honest, right, I'll give you um, a little example of this. I over the past two months, I've had um, eight, seven or eight items that I can't find. Right now, I know what you're thinking. Oh my god, you've you had all them items that you can't find, but. Seven, so I think I've had about seven or eight, but let, let's just call it eight so then I can do this example better. So it's eight items, let's say, I've, I've not been able to find over the last two months. Basically one a week. And uh, I 
I have found seven of those. So, I, you know, obviously I couldn't find them first off. And then I had a, a deeper look. And I found seven of those. So, of course, that tells me that my storage is a problem. That I need, Really, I need to, I need to do an um, alphanumerical storage system. But I've got so many blooming items, you know, that I'm like, oh, I can't be bothered. But I never, I always find them. I always find and And this one this morning, there was one this morning that I couldn't find. It took me about seven or eight minutes to find. I was thinking at first, oh, I don't know where this one is. I have a feeling I might have posted this one out or something. But I found it in the end. You know, I say it took seven or eight minutes or so. Um, so then I think to myself, well, if I'm finding them all in the end anyway, it's not so bad. There was one item that I didn't find. And uh, yeah, I think that that one was a bit of an issue because we do a shed sort um, in, uh, you know, uh, twi- is it twice a year I do it? Yeah, I think it's like twice a year or something I do it. And my mum was coming into the shed because she sometimes gives me a hand with the shed and stuff when, you know, when we're doing these big, like these shoes sorts where they're like, with my like 1,500 items. And she comes in and she's just doing a few little bit, last bits of tidying in the shed. And she puts this wallpaper, this low, well, this is what she thinks she did. She puts this wallpaper, Laura Ashley wallpaper, in the bin with some other little rolls of wallpaper that were used for packaging, but but, but that weren't very good. They were damp or something. So um, she then thinks that she's put that in the bin, you know, months ago, or a couple of months ago anyway. So then obviously I couldn't find that one. So we think that that one was fine anyway, upon obviously me asking my more about that. Um, and then, yeah, so I think that, it's one of those things that really a lot of these not found items, these items that you can't find, a lot of them you're either going to find or what's going to happen is it's going to be either a silly mistake on your part. Maybe you've sent the wrong item to someone ages ago and then, you know, you've not got it in your storage area anymore. Or um, it's the fact something's happened like that. But for whatever reason, I don't know how this could happen, but you've maybe put it in the bin at some point or you've... You've, you've lost it down the side of a shelf somewhere and it's just right in a niggly position that you just can't get to and you can't see. So, you know, there's all these kind of things that come along. But generally, I actually don't find, like really seriously don't find an item a handful of times a year. If, uh, you know, I might come across items and anything, oh, I'm not, I don't know where that is, but I'll always, or nine times, nine times out of 10, I'll find the item. But actually not finding the item it's only a handful of times a year, which is good, which is fine. Because, uh, you know, if you, let's say you've got three or four items you're not finding a year. Once every, what, three or four months you're not finding a, an item. That's doable. That's de- I can deal with that. But it still doesn't kind of uh, shy away from the fact that I do actually need some sort of storage system. But I think what I'll do at this point is when I move house, whenever that may be, two, three years away or something like that, then... I will maybe do a story system then at that point because that's going to be a good point to do it with. I just don't want to go through now. It's just going to be far too much of a hassle to do it now. It will be a hassle then, but because I'm actually moving house and doing everything new anyway, I may as well just get it all done then. And you never know, I might have less items on eBay by then. I may, uh, as I say, I've been thinking about trying to do more higher value items and stuff, so I may have got into a few more higher value items, may have had a sort where I get rid of some stuff. And also, if I'm doing a house move, I'll probably end up getting rid of a ton of stuff anyway, just so that and it's light, a lighter load to move there. So it might just be the best time to do it then. Um, but anyway, so that's um, the podcast for today. I'm just going to very quickly look at... Um, I'm going to quickly check Instagram, but also I got a question on last week's episode of Reselling Rebels. One sec. Um, oh, i got two comments. Oh, no, actually, it's only the one. Uh, oh, no. No, actually, it isn't there. I don't. I don't know. Maybe that person commented on another video. Anyway, I'm not going to do that now. I'll do, maybe try and uh, do it tomorrow on Thursday talks or something. But I will just quickly go on my Instagram, and I will go down to poor practices and seller mistakes. 
Oh no, there's no, there's no comment. Yeah, I thought I didn't think there was any comments on Instagram. So it was just that one on the YouTube community tab post today. So next week's video, uh, next week's podcast is going to be knowing what you want from Resign. So what do you want from Resign? Do you want it to be a part-time thing? Do you want it to be a full-time thing? What sort of income level do you want from Resign? Um, what do you want out of Resign? Do you want it to be a retirement thing? Do you want Resign to be something that will keep you busy during retirement? You know, just we're going to get into knowing what people want from Resign and and being able to distinguish where your path is aside from someone else's path. Obviously, I touched on this very, very briefly today. Um, but, you know, when we're looking at other resellers on YouTube, we have a tendency to to follow them. And, uh, you know, I've touched on comparison as well before, but this is slightly different to comparison because we have a tendency to look at people and think, maybe I'll do this. But sometimes you can just get a little bit distorted and you think to yourself, no, actually, this is my way. So we're going to be touching upon that. If you have any comments and questions or queries relating to that topic of knowing what you want from Resign, maybe you could even just highlight in the comments um, a little bit of your situation of what you're doing with your Resign currently, where you plan to take it. And then obviously I could read off a few stories at the end as well. Um, so that can either go in the comments, it can go on the Instagram post, which will be put up a few hours after this podcast has gone live. So you can go over to my Instagram and comment on that post if you like. And also, as always, there'll be a YouTube community tab post up as well, centered around the topic for next week of knowing what you want from Resign. So with that being said, I'll leave today's podcast here and I will see you in the next one. So I will see you very soon, guys.